Hi, today we're going to be looking at how to balance a grinding wheel. And well, we're going to be looking a little more than that because our fellow student and friend Etienne, who forgot to activate the magnetic table on the surface grinder, well, managed to flip his part, jamming it into the grinding wheel and well, destroying it. So we're going to have to look at how to remove that wheel from the flanges because seeing as we've had an accident here, a crunch, well, we're going to want to check the mounting flanges for the grinder and ultimately the spindle on the grinder to make sure that nothing is damaged there. Now, once we're sure that everything is fine as far as the machine goes, well, we're going to be reinstalling a new wheel verifying it and dressing it. Actually, we're going to be truing the wheel to get it concentric to the spindle and then we'll remove that assembly, head over to the surface plate and, well, balance that assembly. So, let's take a look at that. Using an old spanner wrench because we're going to have to get rough with it and remembering that we have a left-handed mounting flange, we're going to disassemble this grinding wheel. It's evident that I normally wouldn't have to use this much force to disassemble this threaded flange. But remember, this grinding wheel was violently stopped. What you have to remember is that since this threaded flange is threaded with a left-handed thread, it's normal that once the grinding wheel stops violently, that the threaded flange gets over-tightened. Okay, finally. I'm going to want to keep an eye out for damage and since I've just removed this threaded flange we're going to take a few seconds to visually inspect it and see if everything's okay. Now looking at it everything seems fine so we can just set this aside and move on to our next operation. However this second flange the one that was mounted directly onto the spindle with a taper well it's going to have to be inspected a little more closely. We're even going to have to install a dial indicator on it to check for runout. We have to make sure that the accident hasn't bent the spindle or cold welded or galled the male taper to the female taper. Those problems will be clearly visible with the dial indicator. So I can see here that I have a little bit less than one thousandths of runout. Not very good and definitely not acceptable. We're going to have to pull the second flange. This is going to seem pretty easy, but in reality, off camera, I had to fight with this retaining nut quite a bit because, again, after the crunch, since this is a left-hand thread, well, this nut was really jammed onto the spindle thread. So let's get this nut off. Now that the nut's gone, I can install a puller that's going to pull this tapered flange from the spindle. And once again, I expect this to be seized up. Now that I've removed the second flange, and have inspected it. I can see that the female taper and the male taper have sustained some damage since during the crunch the flange has spun on the spindle, scratching and marking both surfaces. So I'm going to use a medium grit emery cloth to polish out those marks. And since I've already rechecked the spindle with the dial indicator, Everything should be all right after this. We can say that we got lucky that the spindle didn't bend. Now we want to install a new wheel. And before we install this new wheel, we're going to want to inspect it visually. We want to make sure that everything is in order and that we have a blotter on each side of the wheel. That's very important. And that there's no obvious 
problems with the wheel. Then we're going to ring it to verify if it's cracked. And if you don't have that nice crisp clear sound, don't install it. We can now reinstall our tapered mounting flange. Making certain to use its jam nut. Remember that it's a left-handed thread. Tighten it down well, but don't kill it. A little more than snug will do fine. We can now reinstall the grinding wheel. And we fix it to the spindle using the second flange, the threaded one. Remember, it's a left-handed thread. With our spanner wrench, we tighten it down well, but remember, don't kill it. We're now ready to start the grinding wheel for the first time, but be careful, it hasn't been balanced yet, so we're going to start by cycling it. And that means that by playing with the on-off switch, we're going to start, stop, start, stop, and progressively bring it up to its maximum RPM. Usually on a small grinding wheel such as this, which is a 10 inch by a half inch thick wheel, we don't need to pre-balance the wheel. But if we were using a larger wheel, let's say a 12 inch diameter, 1 inch thick, well we'd have to pre-balance it. And that means to rough balance it before we even install it on the machine. But in this case that won't be necessary because the wheel is quite small. So we're just going to install it, true it up, and then balance it. So we may have damaged the grinding wheel when we tighten down the mounting flanges. So on the initial startup, we bring the wheel up to its proper RPM by cycling the on-off switches. And since the power is cycled, well, the machine will more than likely be off if the wheel decides to disintegrate. Our friend and colleague Etienne's accident didn't just damage the grinding wheel, the mounting flange, and the spindle. It also damaged the magnetic table, which now incorporates a few good bumps that were produced when the part was jammed into it. And we're going to want to remove those bumps before we install the diamond dresser to true up the wheel. So we're going to use a few drops of Varsol and using a good quality flat edged honing stone, we're going to come and hone the surface of this magnetic table, paying particular attention to those bumps that were produced. I'm not really worried about the gouges that were produced on the table. It's the bumps that come around the gouge that are the problem. So really, just hone lightly, concentrate on those bumps, give the table a good once over, and everything should be just fine. And eventually, usually once or twice a year, but that all depends on the crunches, we can resurface the whole of the magnetic table using the grinding wheel on this surface grinder. Make sure that you wipe down the table really well and using the palm of your hand because it's very sensitive, make one last verification to make sure that all our problems have been resolved. There, this looks good. I can now lock my table in the longitudinal axis and install my diamond dresser for the truing operation. Now, dressing and truing a grinding wheel are two very similar operations, but the objective is quite different. When we dress the grinding wheel, well, we're sharpening that grinding wheel. And when we're truing the grinding wheel, well, we're making its outside diameter concentric with the axis of rotation of the machine's spindle. So, in this case, seen as we've mounted a brand new wheel on the spindle, and seen as the center mounting hole on the wheel always has to be a little loose on the mounting flanges. Why? Well, because those wheels are great in compression, but they're very weak in traction. So we can't jam a wheel on. It has to be a little loose. And that means that when we mount it, it's going to be slightly eccentric. And that's why we true up the wheel. So let's take a look at that.
Okay, so my grinding wheel is now concentric with the spindle. I took off about 15 thousandths of an inch at 1 thousandths of an inch per pass. We're now ready for balancing. With the emergency stop engaged, well, we're going to want to remove the grinding wheel assembly. And I'm very careful here to say grinding wheel assembly. Now we've gone through a lot of trouble to mount the wheel on the mounting flanges and to true everything up. So if I remove the wheel as I did the last time when I removed the broken one, well, things are not going to be true anymore. And I'm back to square zero. So I'm going to want to remove the whole assembly and bring the whole assembly over to the balancing apparatus. I can now remove the nut that's holding the flanges on the spindle. Remember, it's a left-hand thread. I will thread the puller into the flange. And I will remove the grinding wheel with the two flanges still attached. This assembly is concentric, so I'll be able to mount this assembly on a secondary spindle and go over to the wheel balancing apparatus. By using its three adjustable points of contact, and a very accurate machinist's level, we can now level up our wheel balancing apparatus. We start by leveling in one direction. More often than not, we start in the direction that has the two closest contact points. Once that that's leveled up, we can move on to our third contact point that's positioned in the center of the two first contact points. That means that it won't affect the leveling that I've already done in the other plane. If you go about all your precision leveling jobs in this two and one centered fashion, well, you'll find that you can level apart quite quickly. If, however, you attack a leveling job all willy-nilly, any point at a time, well, you'll find it quite frustrating. There you go. Our balancing apparatus is level and ready to go. We can now remove our precision level and our parallels. We can now install our balancing spindle in the mounting flanges of the grinding wheel. There you go. And install the assembly delicately on the wheel balancing apparatus. This is what we call a static balancing, so we're looking for movement. What I'm looking for is really a lack of movement. Regardless of how it's positioned on the apparatus, I would like the wheel to stay put. We can see here that we have a slight rotation that eventually is going to change directions. Unless I see that the grinding wheel is going to roll right off the end of the apparatus, and that really could only be caused by a leveling problem, well, I'm going to let the wheel roll backwards and forwards until it peters out. Once stopped, I will have found my heavy spot on the grinding wheel. Now that the grinding wheel assembly has stopped moving, we can say that the lightest point on the grinding wheel is up here, and that the heaviest point of the grinding wheel is down here. We can also see that we have one, two, and three counterbalancing weights that are installed in a track. These weights can be moved in the track, and that's how we're going to balance our wheel. If you want to statically balance this wheel, because this is a static balancing operation, all we have to do is move away the closest counterweight to the heavy spot of the grinding wheel. 
we're going to move it away very, very little, but move it away just the same. And in this case, we're going to move this counterweight just slightly to the left, just a little further away from my heavy spot. I'm going to have to redo this series of operations until the grinding wheel stays put, regardless of how I deposit it on the apparatus. Using an Allen or hex wrench, I'm going to loosen the counterweight and move away from that heavy spot the counterbalance closest to it just very slightly. I'm going to redo this sequence of operations. That means moving, letting the wheel move to its heaviest spot and moving away the closest counterweight as many times as required until I can get the grinding wheel assembly here to stay static on this balancing apparatus. And I can see I still have work to do. Once that I'm satisfied with the grinding wheels balancing, I can pull it from the balancing apparatus and remove the secondary or balancing spindle. I can now return this well-balanced assembly to the surface grinder. We can then reinstall the assembly on the grinder spindle and dress it one final time. After that, we'll be good to go. Remember, accidents can happen, but if you adopt good work practices, many of them can be avoided. So, have fun, but be safe. And everyone, happy machining.